like not have like any chat open and just kind of like go through that because sometimes you know um i don't want to get like affected by what, what people think or say or sometimes like i feel like when i'm streaming i get into this like loop or like zone right we're gonna get into this flow of things yeah that um i kind of like not have that right now does that make sense just so i you you want to be in a flow no i don't like not i mean like um okay so i don't want to be like um affected by like the mood of like oh um what's chat saying and it's like, I mean, is that going to make me like act different? Like, you know, just, 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 just chill. Close yeah. chat, bro. I never look exactly, at chat. Exactly, exactly, exactly. That's why, that's why, that's why, uh, that's why I, I was saying that. Usually when I'm talking to someone, I, I mean, they require a hundred percent of my attention or I try to give them a hundred percent of my attention. And, and uh, yeah, I mean, I couldn't do what I do if I was having a conversation with like 10,000 people. I'm having a conversation with one person. There just happen yeah. to be like 10,000 people watching. Or more That's good. in your case. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I get it. Yeah. So tell me, what, what, what do you want to talk about today? So you have chat closed or chat is open? Oh, no, it's closed. Okay. Should we just now. Turn, should we turn off stream and, and troll them and talk for an hour in private? <laughs> <laughs> should we stream on and go like, I'm so glad we did this. That was such good content. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, um. Chat right. control us, but we control them too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, we could do it way harder too. Like um I remember Soda one time. I remember he just turned a stream on it and it was like the opening screen or like the starting soon screen and he just never went on it. And it was there for like, I don't know, like a couple hours and he just turned it off. <laughs> <laughs> um Yeah, I, I um so, so tell ahead. me, what, what do you want? I, I think that sounds great, by the way. And what am I calling you, bro? Uh, Felix. Felix, you okay. Felix or Feel? See Felix. Um, wait, what is Feel? Is that a name? Oh, no, I thought you said Feel. I misheard you. Oh, uh, no, uh, Felix or XGC, either. Okay. Either's good. Felix, okay. Yeah. Um, so Felix, what, what do you want? I, I'm uh, completely in favor of what you said earlier about just like having a conversation between two people. Oh yeah, exactly. Um, well, I want to have like some approach with, with topics, more like a, you know, just like open or just like a, a, a like talk. If it, like so, if like some hoop leads us somewhere, just go through it. You know, absolutely, man. Um, Sounds awesome. I mean, there's like a couple things that uh, that I have, that I had, that I like. Um, I've seen on the show, so, but I don't want to like redo things that you already like talked about too much. You know, make it like. I don't think we can... sense. Yeah, Go ahead. you mean you don't want to talk about something that someone else has talked about? Um, not not like directly like that. Just um, like I've listened to some of the advice related to that topic. Does that make sense? Sure. But so I um, I don't think we can redo anything. By the way, because you're a different I, person. Okay. Right. So true. So I I think that if if I've learned one thing, like so you know, let's say I work with a hundred people with depression. It's not a script, yeah. right? Each person's unique, uh, each person's challenge, even though there's something that we share, there's like something that's unique and different about who we are as people. And that's why like you can't watch a conversation with another human being and then that doesn't apply 100% to you. So I get what you're saying, but I would also say like, don't, how can I, I almost get a sense of service in the way that you're talking right now. It's almost like saying, like we should, like, cause you've already talked about this before. So like, we, we don't need to talk about it with me, but I'm saying like, oh, okay. if that's important to you, we should absolutely talk about it. And who the fuck oh, okay. cares about what we've said in the past with other people. Mm -hmm. So what okay. do you want to talk about, Felix? Um, well, I had, I had taken notes like over the past couple months or whatever, like stuff like, um, just like generic like issues that I think most streamers like have not like issues, but you know, like, uh, mental challenges. Yeah. Um, you know, stuff like, um, imposter syndrome, stuff like, um, self-sabotage or whatever. Okay. Which is, I, I think self-sabotage is like well, probably one of my, um, not favorite, but like something that I, 
and I see more often than myself. So right? tell me, in, in what ways do you sabotage yourself? Um, you know, the the analogy I always give is kind of like when you play a game and you get a certain rank, right? That's like really good, and you're really proud of yourself. A lot of times, um, even if I have it, and I'm I'm happy with it. I'll feel like if I play a game or two and I'm not good and I'm not doing good, I'll feel like I want to lose that rank, right? Just so I could get it back, just so I can feel like I deserve it. Does that make sense? Yeah. I, so I, 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 go ahead. No, go ahead. I feel like I do that with a lot of things. Almost everything I do that. That exact same thing. Or I'll purposely like destroy a part of something just so I could build it again, so I could feel like I deserve it. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. So it's almost as if you... It's almost as if you need to gain that rank to show yourself that you deserve to be there. Yeah. And, and getting there once isn't enough. It's never enough. So let's think about that. Why do you think that is? It sounds tiring, by the way, to constantly it, need to prove your worth. Um, yeah, it's, it's super tiring. You get it set up where you get two different internets, right? And you get it installed to where like they're both going in. And if one fails, the other one kicks in. Oh, interesting. I've never, I've never heard of that. Hold yeah. On, let me see if I can. There we go. All right. Sorry about that. So we're yeah, back. Actually, you know what? In terms of in terms of, of mindset with mm -hmm. I think streamers, I've talked to like a crazy amount of streamers about this. And I've not I've not found one person who disagrees that um dropped frames, lag, server problems, um internet problems while streaming is one of the most discouraging thing ever. Uh it I don't think anything comes close to that. Yeah, so it was like, interesting, you know, as the internet went out again, because this happened on Friday um, when we were talking to Pokemon, and and like, it was so interesting to feel my reactions because at first I was like super super angry because I was like, what what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, you know, because I, I so after Friday I like made sure everything is okay, like tested our router, like everything's fine. We called our ISP and they were actually doing maintenance in the middle of the afternoon on Friday, which is why it went oh, yeah. out. And so then I was like, okay, fine. So it looks like we're, we're done now, like no more maintenance. And then sure enough, and I can, you know, I can play games for like eight hours and our internet doesn't go out at all. It's like yeah, exactly. lagless and, and no problem if I'm just hanging out with my friends. But when you're, you know, streaming with one of the biggest people on Twitch, then suddenly your internet is like, get fucked, kid. Yeah, that's so annoying. You can't do anything um, about it. And and so I was just oh. thinking a little bit about, okay, well, I can't really do a whole lot about it. So let's just, I decided to get myself some water and, and um, yeah. yeah. Fed my kid uh, a bite like, of egg. Okay. Do you have a, do you have a kid or uh, like a lot of them? I have a, a, something between A and a lot. I've got two. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Yes, I I had to like think about this. I, I don't know why, but yeah, okay. Um, but can I see your um your face? Yeah, you can't see my face on Discord. No. Shit, this is happening again. Okay, hold on. Hold on, we fixed this. Hold on, hold on. How did we do this? Oh yeah, yeah. Hit hit the hit the grid view. Oh wait, yeah, you're right. Oh yeah, I can see your face. Okay. Okay. Not oh, always wait. my fault. Twitch chat. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, yeah. Do you like to like see yourself while you're, while you're streaming? Because do I like uh, to for see a person? Yeah. Do you have anywhere on your screen that you can see yourself while you're streaming at any given time? Uh, I used to not have that. Now I do. Okay. So okay. so now they changed my layout to where I can see my face on the screen. Why do you do you like that? Why do you ask? Um, I, I really don't like it. I don't like it. What do you dislike about it? It feels 
disingenuous to what I want to do. What like, do you want to do? If I want to um, just chill and do like more like organic stuff. And I feel like sometimes seeing myself kind of reminds me, oh man, this is like, this is camera, this is film, this is whatever. Like, I feel like it, it's a it's a constant like it a bring back all the time, kind of a real thing back like a like a fishing rod, you know? Yeah. So if I'm if I'm hearing you, what I'd say is that what you're really going for is like immersion, or almost yeah. like a flow state where you're a hundred percent with what you're doing. Yeah. And and when you see yourself on camera, it sort of like reminds you that Felix like this is like we're streaming. There are people watching. There's this, all this other thing, and then you're not you're not present at the task that you're doing. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that sounds, that sounds bad. Um, I do a lot of small things here and there. And like my, my, I my setup, my daily life. I feel like to maintain that state, you know, sometimes I like, I try too hard to keep that state. Um, I still do it. I don't know why, but I still do it. Okay. What, when you say that state, you mean the flow state, like the state of being present? Just like stuff with like the way I arrange my things or the way that I go that I go go on with my day, like I have problems doing stuff before stream or doing stuff that no that was good doing stuff before stream is really hard. I like to like tunnel vision and wake up and and have one mindset, one need, one want, and I just go into that and I just follow it along. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. And whenever I do something before stream, I feel like I'm I'm somewhere, and then I go to what I do I, to what I want to do, right? And there's a big like I'm I'm just kind of in a, in a in an odd state, and I can always it always happens, you know? It's, yeah. It's very predictable, and it, so, I always get, get upset at that. I think it's a bad effect. Uh, when you say you get upset, you get upset by not being as clear headed as if you start right away. Yeah. I'm like, I, I feel disconnected and that's not what I want to put out. It's not what I want to be. And I feel like, um, I don't know. It, I just don't feel like I'm, you know, worth my own stage or whatever. Does that make sense? It's kind of like, yes. Like, yeah. There are two things there. Okay. So Felix, you yeah. let me know which one you want to talk about. One is cognitively and neuroscientifically why it is easier to produce better work when you start first thing after you wake up. So this is a concept that's been understood by yogis in India for thousands of years. And there's a Sanskrit phrase, Brahma Murta, which sort of encapsulates the idea of like starting your day off right. We can talk about that. The second thing, okay. um, and that's going to be like a little bit more like teaching, um, the second thing is actually a little bit more subtle and I think maybe a little bit more personal and helpful, which is somewhere along the way. So you said, I don't deserve my own stage, right? And and this kind of reminds me of what you said earlier about like, if you get to a certain rank and then you play one or two bad games, you feel like you don't deserve that rank. So you want to get knocked down so you can reaffirm yourself that you deserve to be where you are. And then you want to climb up again. Because when you climb up, then like, no, you don't take anything for granted, right? Like you started at the bottom and then you climbed up. So you're like, okay, like, yeah. Felix deserves this because I just rose through the ranks. Yeah. And then like coasting is, is like, well, maybe I don't really deserve to be here. But if you just rise, then you're like, yeah, absolutely. Because if I didn't deserve to be here, then I wouldn't have been able to climb. If I really deserved to be one rank lower, then I wouldn't have just won 10 games in a row, right? Yeah. So the subtle yeah, thing of... there. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. No, you go ahead. The subtle thing there that like really blows my mind, Felix, is like, where do you like, so if we think about it, your sense of intrinsic value is not there. You need to climb ranks to assure yourself that you deserve something. So why on yeah. earth don't you have an intrinsic sense of like what you deserve? And I, Okay. I don't know that necessarily that you need to even answer that or that's the second topic, right? Like, yeah. like, cause if we think about it, you know, if I move through the world and I walk down the street, there's a sense of value that I have that comes from within. And then there's a sense of value that comes from outside. And what I'm noticing in you, when you say phrases like imposter syndrome, 
or or you you say things like I don't deserve the stage or you say things like self sabotage that in my mind tells me that your sense of value internally got like kind of tampered with at some point okay and yeah, and we I can try to figure out why because like all those things are the same does that make sense yeah i think they 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 interact with each other i feel like yeah so so and that just has to get come down to like why don't you think you have value as a person like why don't you think you deserve what you have interesting you know where does that where does that come from? Because I, I don't think people are born that way. I think people are born with generally a sense of entitlement, right? <laughs> that they deserve, like, yeah. And they're kids and they're kind of narcissistic. And then somewhere along the way, things happen to us. And then we start to, like, lose value in who we are as, as people. Okay. Well, I, I would guess that, um, that I mean, it, it has to be somewhere. Because um, I, feel, I feel like that sense has like almost developed or something into something that is more than just like uh like simple like self sabotage like like I said earlier like almost like a relationship. Um what do you that, mean by that? Like I'm, I almost need it now. Almost like uh almost like I want it. Almost like I emulate it sometimes. It's almost like um something I'm familiar with. Yeah. Right. So can I tell you a story about a patient of mine? Sure. So I had a patient who had um, been in, in three abusive relationships in a row. Yeah. And, and what, what she needed from her, her current partner was just like, and so the reason, so she had had the three abusive relationships and then had dated a couple of people and essentially kind of drove them away. Um, and the reason she kind of drove them away and so she blamed herself for this, which is sort of fair, is that like, you know, it, the relationships weren't abusive and it was kind of confusing to her. And so she kind of needed like constant reassurance that like they weren't going to leave her. And then like the more she needed reassurance, like the more kind of clingy she became and the more that okay. her prospective boyfriends couldn't handle it. And so they ended up like the relationship kind of fell apart. And then what happened, like it, it's kind of subtle, right? So like if I'm, let, let's say that I need reassurance from you. And then I ask you for that reassurance and then you give it. And the next day I ask and you give it. And the next day that I ask and you give it. And then eventually you kind of get fed up and you leave. What do you think happens to the next person I date? How does that relationship look? Okay. Uh, I think I understand. Um, I, okay, okay, okay. This is, you know, I was listening. Um, I was paying too much attention to like the, the details where I, I felt the big picture. Does that okay. make sense? Yeah, sure. The, so, the big picture of the story, I lost it because I, I spent too much time understanding the specifics. Yep. I, I see that. Okay. So if I have a relationship where I need a lot of reassurance from someone. Okay. And then I you drive, stop getting it. Huh? And then, and then you stop getting it in the next one or whatever. Yeah, well, no. So it's not even that I stop getting it. What do you think happens in the next one? So like my need for your love, once okay. you leave me, what happens to how much love I need? Um, no idea, actually. Tell me. Okay. So, so what happened with her is that she kind of felt like, so that person left, right? And so the second relationship, it's even worse because now someone has abandoned her again. And so she needs more and more reassurance. And then she drives the second person away and then two people leave. And then she's like, oh my God, I need more and more reassurance. She loses value in herself with each relationship. Okay. And she needs more and more validation from each person. And it's a vicious cycle because she can never get enough validation. Makes sense. Does that make sense? And so, yeah. so the, the, but the reason that she can never get enough validation is because she doesn't feel good about herself. She doesn't feel like she's unlovable. Or she, she feels like she's unlovable. She doesn't feel like she is lovable. Therefore, she needs more validation from other okay. people. And okay. it's kind of like a vicious cycle because the more validation she gets, she doesn't develop confidence in herself. Okay, so her like self reward isn't enough that she needs more from others that becomes unreasonable. Like they can't even give her it's that it's too much. Exactly. So she okay. becomes dependent on validation from other people to the point where that validation is almost unobtainable because it's it's too much from a normal yep. relationship. Yep. Okay. Sound familiar? 
Um, yes. How so? Yeah. Um, I used to I used to do this, I used to do this thing. Uh, I play Overwatch, right? And I would care a lot about just the game and how well I would do, how well I would perform, right? So I, I want you to, can I just jump in and pause? Sorry if I'm derailing you. But I, no, I love what you said. I used to care a lot. I think that's going to be the answer. So please continue. Okay. I, um, I'd care a lot about the actual gameplay and how good I was and um, how I'd perform at any given time. And if I, if I felt like I was playing like really bad and I was doing really bad, and then I noticed I had a lot of viewers, it, it, it made me like um, upset. Maybe upset that people would tune in and watch such trash gameplay. So I would like shave off viewers on purpose. Like it would happen very often where I'd do things to lose viewers. So then I'd be like, I lost something. I need to get this back. I'm going to play well. And then when, it come, when the viewers come back or when it rises again, I'll feel like I, 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 I deserve it. You know, I deserve their, their eyes and their presence. Because look, man, I, I worked there. You know, I didn't just... So, you know, so Felix, why do you have to shave off viewers? This is important. Why do you, sa that's like, this is real sabotage. Why do you have to get rid of them? Um, what, well, how do you feel if they stayed and you played like shit? Well, I think I'm wasting the time. Yeah. Right? How does that feel to you to waste other people's time? It feels really bad. And how does it feel when they leave? Um, I think it'll feel good. And when I do, it feels weird, but somewhat good. Yep. But then it gives me, but then it gives me a goal. Yeah. So that's weird, right? Like, let's just look at that for a second. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's look at that. Okay. So when you play bad and people stick around, like, why do you think they stick around? Because you have to push them out the door, right? You have to actively try to get them to, like, leave. Why do they stick yeah. around? I mean, the people that stick around, I mean, for, for gameplay, I would, I would think that they would stay because of how good they think I am or how better they think I can do. No. Right? No. Oh, no, why not? Why, why, why do they stay then? They stay because they, they like you. They value you. Okay, okay, okay. okay. I'm going to stop it there. That's good. But when I, when I care about performance and gameplay, that I don't like. I understand you don't like that. Okay. Right? So you think your value is determined by your gameplay. So, yeah. But what I'm telling, what I'm telling, I mean, there, got, there have to be people, I mean, I don't, I don't really know, but there have to be people who are better at Overwatch than you are. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Now Why yeah. do they watch you? Like, this is the thing that you don't get, and it's so fucking confusing to you, <laughs> that you have value outside of your performance. Because the other guys didn't stream. Fine, whatever. You can devalue yourself however you, but do you get that? Like, they're sticking around yeah, because they like you. Okay. And then, and then what do you do? Like, that feels weird. Like, if I tell you, if I tell you, Felix, that people like you because of you and not because you're playing perfect every match, how does that make you feel? Uh, it makes you feel a bit weird. Yeah. What is that weird? Let's understand that. Um, maybe I, I don't think that I'm, like, interesting enough for that, like, a level of attention or something. Yep. Um, right. Uh, yeah. So, so there's a disconnect between the way that you value yourself as a person and the way that Twitch values you. And this is why Twitch is beautiful. Because they care about you as a person and that's fucking confusing to you. And then what you do is you have to repeat this drama, right? Or then what you do is you push him out the door. And so like, let me just, let me think about this. I have to just write this out, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm going to need a minute. Okay.
now that uh, uh, can you can you listen and 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 type it sometime? Uh, probably not, but but let me hear what you have oh, to say. Oh no, go ahead. No, no, go no, for it. No, no, it wasn't. It, I was just adding some precision. Please. Um. Now this kind of like developed into something different now, that it's not exactly like that anymore, because I'm not really like like a competitor anymore. So if I if I if I play like trash, it's like whatever. Um. I don't really hold my own gameplay to like a, a high standard. I only care when I care, or when I only care about the gameplay or my performance when I want to care about it. Does that make sense? Okay. If I'm in a state where I, where I don't care that much, if I play poorly, oh, I can laugh it off and, and, and chill with chat or whatever. But if I'm in a state where I do care about the gameplay and I want to show them that I'm, that I'm good to myself and others and show that, that passion for getting better, if I don't do well, then I, then I get like that, right? Okay. So I think you've learned two modes is what I'm hearing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we'll, we'll dig into that further. That's very helpful. Thank you for sharing that. Okay. Okay. So th this is what I'm going to say, okay? So I, there's this idea of intrinsic value, which is value f about like who you are. And then there's extrinsic value. There's like the value that the world shows you. Okay. And, and so somewhere along the way, you started like needing that at, like you felt like you don't have intrinsic value. Like your sense of like what you bring to the table is dependent on your performance. So this yeah. is like, like, you know, so I, I'm a doctor. So it's kind of like a doctor saying, you know, whether I'm a good doctor or bad doctor sort of depends on how many lives I save or don't save, which makes sense, right? Like if I'm, I mean, if you think about it, like a good doctor is someone who, who saves a lot of lives, but it's, it's subtle. Makes sense. I'm not saying it's illogical at all. Yeah. And I think there's something weird that happens. So when you play, so when you rise and you have a certain level of value and then you play poorly and Twitch chat doesn't leave you. Something funny happens. You feel uncomfortable yeah. because they are not sending you signals that are consistent with the way that you, you see yourself. You're like, yeah. why are these, why are these fucking people watching this show? They don't, yeah. they don't like, this is shitty. Like I'm performing yeah, it's, terribly. It's... And then what you have to do is you have to create the reality that you feel, which is that you have to, since they're like, so imagine you're on stage and there are a lot of people watching and you're bombing on stage, right? Like you're doing a terrible job, but like no one's leaving the theater. And then yeah, what happens I just, is I like, put them, I yeah. just put the mic in my, to my, I just, I, I just blow in the mic. Yep. You know? And, and then you take like, you, you go backstage and you take a, a sack of like rotten fruit and then you start throwing it at people. Yeah. And I'm then, and then they start leaving. And then you feel good about yourself because at least then yeah. they are doing what they're supposed to do. Exactly. Just They're supposed to leave because I'm shitty. Like, why aren't they leaving? <laughs> yeah. And then what you do, then it's a system you understand, right? Because then everyone has left. And then there's yeah. one dude in the theater. And then you're like, okay, I can bring him back. And then Felix yeah. arises from the ashes. You pick up the microphone, yeah. you start making jokes, you start performing again. And then people start coming back and you're like, okay, okay, this is okay. This is okay. Because yeah. then you know what you're, what you're offering them is good because they're coming in the door. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so, like, like, let's just think about that. Like, what do you think about that, man? Um, I think it's a route to failure, but it's also a road to success. Absolutely. So success and failure is one thing. Okay, we're not talking about success and failure. I mean, we can, but what I'm talking about is value. I'm not talking about the external world. What I'm saying, the weird thing here is that when you're on stage and you feel like you're bombing, those people want to stay. Yeah. What do you think about that? It, it, it's, it's almost discomforting. It's, it's odd. It's very discomforting. What is that discomfort? What are you feeling? Um, like I said, I feel like I'm, I'm failing them. Like I'm, moist, I'm, I'm wasting their time. I feel like uh, I feel like they signed up for something and they're not getting it, and and they're sticking around for like the potential or the ideal that it will happen. Yeah. 
So, so, so sure, I understand. Like, because, because once again, if you think they're sticking around for the potential, it could happen. That's because you believe they're sticking around because of your performance, right? Yeah. Like, it's like you think that your value is based on your performance, which makes a lot of sense. Because your life has been one where I imagine, I mean, I think you're pretty good at Overwatch, right? Uh, yeah, I'm super good yeah. at it. Yeah. So if you're really good at Overwatch, then you've been taught that your success is correlated with your performance. Absolutely. And, and, but here's the thing, right? Like, so here's the funny thing about Twitch is that there are a lot of people here who are very, very good. And, and also, like, but I don't think that that's, that, it's not just skill that makes you good. I mean, successful on Twitch, right? There's yeah. something there's something that streamers have which connect with, like, this is the really cool thing for, as a psychiatrist, I see this. It's, like, really fascinating that there's something about you. There's something intrinsic about who you are that, like, resonates with people in your audience. Mm -hmm. Like, they connect to you in some way. And that's not just because you're good. Because there are, like, like, if you just think about it, you know, there, there are lots of good Overwatch players out there and maybe some of them stream, maybe some of them don't. But there are a lot of good people who stream. But I think the crazy yeah. thing here is somewhere along the way, you lost, like, you can't fathom that someone would stay on the stage if you're playing bad. I mean, someone would stay in the audience and stay in their seats if you're playing bad on stage. And I think that if you want to stop self-sabotaging, like, first of all, because like, that's what you're doing, right? When you, when you start going, and you just, you know, you push them out. Mm -hmm. And then the problem is that it reinforces, even though it shouldn't, because like it reinforces this idea that your value comes from bringing people in the door. But th the real thing is, if you really look at it scientifically, clearly that's not where your value comes from, because when you play bad, people don't leave. But you're just ignoring that data point. Yeah, because I feel like in that particular moment, like I care about being good. I care about being a competitor. I care about... Uh, outperforming i care about like rolling in my game like in that state of mind like i don't it just seems kind of like an odd to say I, I don't care that much about about twitch i don't care that much about about viewer numbers i care about being good yes so i think that makes perfect sense but then the question is there's a part of you so i think that's exactly what you should care about right like you should care about going on stage and just giving the best of what you can give the problem is that clearly there is a part of your mind that cares about more than that. Okay. Because if that's all you cared about, like let's say you're on stage and you're juggling and you drop a ball or something, right? Mm. If all you care about is being better, you're just going to pick up the ball and keep juggling. And whether people stay or people go, you don't care because you're focused on the juggling. In that's fact, amazing. I think that there is something in you that is... It, because, but that's not what happens. You're As you right. put it, you shave off viewers. So clearly there's a part of you that cares about something else. There's a part mm -hmm. of you that cares about being a good juggler. And there's a part of you that cares about being seen as a good juggler. Okay. You don't want people to see your failure. That's, that's accurate. That's good. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that was a good um, mental development. I didn't, think about it. I didn't think about it that way. I so, always see it like as a one-sided thing. Yeah, right? And, 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 and that's not wrong because I think you're, you're a smart guy, Felix, and you know that part of yourself. But if we look at your behavior, there's something else. It's not that you're wrong. It's that it's incomplete. And now we get to the idea of like, when did you... So now I want to... Like, thoughts, questions? Can I keep going? No, it's all good. Yeah, keep going. So, so, so let's think about this. When did you start caring about... Because you're not a guy who usually cares about appearances, right? No, really. So when, can you remember a time where that changed? When did you start caring? Like this could, it could be like a small and insignificant thing. Like maybe you were growing up or something like that. You guys need something? No. Oh. Mm. Well, Say I'm it. About appearances, I, I don't, I still don't think I cared that much. Uh, appearances as in what? Because I, I was always like, um, I don't know. Go ahead. Like, was there a time that you remember kind of feeling, not necessarily physical appearances, but that like you kind of feel, I mean, this is such a generic question. Everyone's going to have this, but you know, where a time where you kind of felt like super ashamed of the way that you were perceived. 
that you felt like other people saw you as a failure? Mm. If I look back at it. I mean, that's going to be true of everyone. My question is, does anything jump to your mind? So let me put it this way. So, you know, when, when, you're, when you're playing poorly and people are sticking around and you feel discomfort, can you remember yeah. feeling that discomfort in other scenarios outside of streaming and gaming? Yeah. There where, was this, where there people was this should be leaving though. and they should be calling you a piece of shit, but they didn't. And yeah, I had, this, um, I had this thing a long time ago where um, I had to, I, w I was good at doing uh, trampoline, right? And the people at my gym saw it and they wanted me to compete, right? Because mm -hmm. I could do tricks that other people couldn't. So I started uh, training and refining the moves or whatever. And then I had to compete in like some, some weird suit. I didn't like any of it. Uh, I didn't like the, the weirdness of competing. I like more the organic uh, action of it. Yeah. So the presence dad, of just doing the trick for the sake of doing the trick, right? Not trying to win. Yeah, anything. exactly. Yeah. Or, or make it perfect, make it look perfect, whatever. Like that, that perfection of the craft wasn't really, oh, now I sound, I sound like Ninja. That's, that's Ninja's line. Unbelievable. Um, where um, my, my dad went on, on like a date and at this competition or whatever. And he was like, Oh, dude, you know, we're going to go watch you. I was like, dude, hell yeah, man. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to roll, you know, cause I'm better than all these kids. So I show up there and my moves are like way better. I, I'm, I'm objectively, if I just do whatever I'm doing all the time, my normal like routine, I, I win this. And I show up and I bomb super hard. What the first trick lands, I land to the side. And then I, I jump sideways, like I even fall. <laughs> and then the, the uh, second attempt rolls around and it's even worse, right? And it's like everybody in the stage is quiet, right? Or like I stop and it's over. Or like once you fall, it's over. And it's just completely quiet and everybody's looking. And I'm like, oh my God, like I, I can't believe this. And my dad's on a date, right? And I know he's out there. And I'm like, this is unbelievable. And that was like really, really bad. And I, I ended up quitting. I just, I'm done with competing. Like I'm, this never mm -hmm. gonna happen again. Yeah, that was one of those moments. And what did your dad say? Um, he always like pushed me to compete and everything. So a lot of times, it was like you know, in 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 other scenarios, when I was younger, when I, when I would compete, um, he'd be like, you know. Ah, it's okay, man. Good job, good job. But that was so embarrassing that it was kind of like, ah, it's okay, man. Like, you know? There it is. Hold on a second. So when you perform badly and he says good job, that's people not leaving the audience. Yeah. Right? So when your dad would say good job, I want you to think back and really remember, how did you feel when he said good job after you know you did a bad job? That was very important for me. What, in, in what way? When you fucked up and your dad said, good job. Um, that he saw the value in me trying. Uh, it, 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 it matters that, um, you know, I, I, I fell once and he's still behind me and I don't have to fall again. Does that make sense? Like, mm -hmm. I, I, almost like failing twice. Almost. So you felt very supported by him. Yeah. By saying you did a good job. Yeah. Did you feel ashamed? Um, you kind of like on the fence. You kind of like uh, in the gray area, where you like you failed once, and you feel like if if you have feedback that you failed them, then you failed twice, right? So being like in on edge about like how much of a failure this is and then seeing them like support you and they, oh good job kind of makes you kind of okay you know it's not it's not that bad 
Yeah, so I'm actually, so that's interesting. That wasn't the answer I was expecting from that story, but let, um, let's, let me just think for, okay. So the interesting thing is that, so it sounds like he was supportive, but it also sounds like it doubles the pressure on you. Yeah. To win the second time. Yeah. And the, the interesting thing is that, in a weird way, that actually sounds like winning people back, right? So, like, let me just let me just give you. Man, this is so hard to wrap my head around, but I'm going to try to say it, and it may not make sense. So, so I'm just trying to think about okay, like when you, it's like it's almost like your dad giving you feedback, and then you winning after that is like you getting your rank back after losing rank. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Or getting at least a part of it back. Getting a part of it back, right? It's like, it's not that fail. Like, you have no problem dropping ranks. What bothers you is, like, dropping a rank and not getting it back. Yeah, but also losing even more because of uh, my projected rank in his mind or something. Yeah, that's exactly what we need to talk about. Okay. Right? So where do you get the idea of, like, what his projected, like... I mean, I hate to be so fucking generic as, you know, use a psychiatry term, but like, is, is your dad proud of you? Um, yeah, maybe, I don't know. Um, in what times though? Like, when, he, when he's proud, proud, I can tell. When, he, when, he, when he's uh, proud, to be nice, I can also tell, right? And I feel like, like as you kind of grow older, I feel like, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to put this. I feel like when I was young, I needed him more to be proud than today. I feel now I've been like more, more like places where I get like validation or va more like, um, why I get when did you need uh, your can you tell me what I just need a second I'm sorry keep going what? Uh, is what I'm saying wrong or like uh, something or uh, no 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 I think it's I think it's like exactly what we're looking for it's just a, it's it, it, I, I'm taken aback by your answer right because okay. what what I'm hearing from you is sometimes that's what I'm hearing from you but there's well yeah. there's a lot there because I mean you just said that you needed like the time that you needed him to be proud of you was when you were younger, which is yeah. also like that implies that he wasn't. You know, that's a powerful statement to make. And then the the last thing is that like you know generally speaking like as a parent, you know I mean a complicated answer to the question is your dad proud of you is sort of like a no. Right. So that yeah. means that on some level, like it's complicated in your mind. It's still muddy. It hasn't been resolved. And it's certainly not a yes. Yeah. And if we think a little bit about it, I mean, I think that that's like, that's what we have to look into. I, I mean, I feel like, <clears throat> okay, so let's just take a step back and let me walk you through my yeah. reasoning. Okay. Sure. Go ahead. So we talked about imposter syndrome. We talked about self-sabotage. We talked about not living up to expectations. There's this idea that like you let people down and they their capacity to have intrinsic pride in you as a person, when they do that, it confuses the shit out of you. Mm -hmm. And then what you do is you create a situation where they're proud of you, but their pride in you makes sense because you are proud in yourself as well. Yeah. The problem okay. arises when you feel ashamed of yourself and they don't, connect with you there. They're like not calling you a piece of shit when they should be calling you a piece of shit. But instead what they do is they send you love and support and that's just really odd and confusing to you. So then you mm -hmm. change the system up to where you feel comfortable in it. And the way that you feel comfortable is by winning again. Mm -hmm. Like what makes you uncomfortable is when people care about you and you're losing. So you just like, you're like, okay, I'm going to lose and then I'm going to push them out the door and then I'm going to win. And then they've loved you all along. The only difference is that like, sometimes yeah. you love yourself and you create mm -hmm. systems where you can love yourself and then their love for you, which is constant, makes more fucking sense. Does that yeah. make sense? Mm -hmm. And so then the next question becomes, where the fuck does this come from? Like, why? 
Like, why is it so damn complicated? Right? Why can't you yeah. just be loved by Twitch chat? Like, that's kind of the end of it. Yeah. And, and that, and so, so then, like, usually that's learned, okay? So it's not like you're busted in some way. It's just like, like, we learn that, right? And so then the issue is, I mean, then the issue is like, you know, who in your life taught you that you don't have intrinsic value? Because kids start out kind of like narcissistic and egotistical and they think they're the wonderful, most wonderful people in the world. And then someone comes along and sort of tells them that, you know, your value, so like you were taught something, which is that your value as a human being depends on performance. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, and, I was taught that 100%. Yeah, so who taught you that? My dad told me that. Okay, well, so, okay. Right, so, <laughs> so, so, so there we go, right? So, so I don't even... That was too easy. Hold on. Oh, well, I mean, I, I, I mean, I can pinpoint it. It's not like it's like a like tell, difficult. Like, tell me, tell me, tell me about that. Just tell me about your dad. You know, teaching you that lesson. I tell mean, me but that was like a. I mean, he always wanted me to compete, and I was a competitor. I was always very competitive when I was young with my with my brother, or like I, I kind of need that fire, and he wanted me to compete in things that I didn't really care about, but. Since, you know, when we're young, like, I don't really have, like, passions for, like, a crazy amount of things. So if you, if you want that, oh, maybe it's cool. I'll just do it, right? I did it. It's not like he forced me to. I mean, if he did, I, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be much of a difference for me. So let, let's, let's think for a second. If you didn't like it and he wanted you to compete, why did you do it? If he didn't force you? Oh, well, take, take for example, something like, uh, like skiing. I used to do, like, competitive skiing, right? And um, I didn't really like it that much. I, I, I thought it was kind of boring, the way you would okay. practice. And uh, I, I thought it was trash. But he cared about it a lot. And all of his friends, like, all had kids that, that, would, that would compete. And I just kind of had to show up. And I would roll them. But I, I didn't really care about it. Why did you do it? Um, because my dad wanted me to. So what were you looking for when, when, when you rolled them? What would your dad, how would you look at you? What would he say? I mean, he'd be, he'd be super proud when I would win. And I would, I'd win a lot. So he'd be proud all the time. Right? And how did that make you feel? I made me feel good. Like um, I'm winning on both ends. What yeah. are the two ends? Well, I win at, at, at the competing. So I get like, the validation, like, oh, you're rank one or whatever. And then... Did you care about that? Yeah, of course. Okay. Even if I don't care about what it is, if I win, it, it still matters. Okay. Sometimes even more than what the action is itself. Okay. Right? Sure. Like, like if I play some game, nobody cares about, like, like Dora and, like, the, the rank one speedrunner. It's, it still, still feels good. Sure. I'm rank one. Okay. And what was winning on the other side? You said actually winning is a piece I mean, of it. And then, and then he, I mean, he's proud of me. And then I, I, since he, he is like a, a, like a competitive mindset, like I know that he cares that I win. So I win and for myself and I win for him too. So it's kind of double win. Mm. Both ends. Yeah. So what I'm hearing, did, w w did your dad, how would he treat you if you lost? Um, I guess it depends on what field, but I guess, um, I guess he's still, he still felt pretty good, I suppose. Um, yeah, I, 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 I think, I think he still gave me that validation even when I didn't do well. And did you know he was, do you, do you think he was being genuine at those times or do you think he was disappointed in you? I think so. No, right. I don't, I don't, I, I don't, I really feel like he felt disappointed uh, in, he, in my competing. He did or did not? Did not. I don't think he, I don't okay. think he ever felt, uh, like that. And I've not, it's not even like that, like it, it, it just happened a lot. Like, um, like competing like for myself, but for him also, like it, it there's a bunch of times I competed in like, uh, uh, skiing, biking, some, some other shit. Like, like it, it would happen like commonly, you know? How old were you when you were competing in skiing and biking? I guess I'd be like 
10 and then maybe like 13, 12. And, and that so range. it sounded like you didn't really like those sports, right? No, I didn't like them that much, especially, especially biking because my bike sucked. It was just trash, right? And I was competing against kids that had like, like multi-thousand dollar bikes or whatever. And then that's like a long story, but my chain, like I could be close to winning and then my, my chain on my bike would, 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 would fall off and I had to physically get up and, and put it back on both, on both ends, right? And then go back again. And I just felt cheated all the time. Like when I lost, I got at the end and I, I, I lost. I was like, dude, I didn't have a chance. Yo, this, this fucking sucks. Like, fuck these guys. You guys, you guys suck balls. You're not even good at the sport, man. So my, I can't even get a working bike, yo. Yeah. Yeah. And, and how, <laughs> what happened at the end of the race? What, what did your dad say? He'd always be proud. But I, I, I would never like hold it against them. Like they don't have a good bike. Like I, I couldn't care. Like I mean, I, like that. That for me, there was no other tool that I could have. Like that was my tool, and it was trash. You, just, you know, you just make it work, right? Yeah, but he was proud anyway. Like he, he'd still like give me that 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 validation of like, hey man, you, did, you still did, you did it pretty good. And, like I'm, like I'm glad you did it or something. Or, um, so yeah, he's still happy. You again, is your dad proud of you? Uh, I don't throw the bus on stream, but I, I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so either. So the yeah. question is why? Why do you feel that way? I think because he, he has things that he wants me to do well in. And in those things, I don't do well or never cared enough to do well. And his sort of interest doesn't shift. Just kind of stayed there. How does that make you feel? Um, it makes me seek that validation vision elsewhere and find and build systems where I get it there. Did you understand that before this conversation? Not really. Okay, because that's absolutely the answer. Very well said. Okay. Right? So, like, the, the fuel for your system, brilliant, actually, Felix. Because that's the point that I'm moving towards. But that only is true if your dad is not proud of you, right? And like, that's where like, it's a hard thing. Like, how do you feel saying the words out loud that you're afraid that your dad may not be proud of you? Because I'm not so sure that he's not proud of you, for the record. But like, how does it feel to say that? I feel kind of odd because I feel like um, your parents are kind of like a big part. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you got this big puzzle or whatever. And you know, it has like a thousand pieces. Well, well, the pieces that are like your your parents are like the like huge ones in in the middle that the ones that you should care about, the ones that are that matter the most that, right? Yeah, but like, what makes you think you don't matter about them? Well, you care well, you don't care about them or they don't matter. How are you getting that? Why? Why said that again? So you just said those are the puzzle pieces that should matter the most. Yeah. When you say should matter the most, it implies that they don't matter the most. So why yeah. do you think that your parents don't matter? Well, now they matter, but now the since I build those systems, um, their their input and validation is kind of irrelevant. Yes, and absolutely not. So you're okay. you're a hundred percent correct that you have created systems that will satisfy the hunger that your parents left you with. Mm -hmm. But the goal here at least in my mind is to like is to be free of those systems because those systems fucking torture you okay right so like there's a part there's a there's a there's a world i want you to imagine felix where you play because you want to be the best not because you need validation and i know you know that mm -hmm. like you play for the purpose of schooling those noobs like yeah. that's enough but then what you have is this whole other layer on it where like you need the validation. Like it's not about like, cause this goes back to like, you know, you there, there's a moment where you want to juggle just for the sake of juggling, but you do care. So my whole point is that if you want to live the life that you really want to live, which is to focus on juggling and schooling noobs for the sake of schooling noobs, you've got to let go of caring about other people. And I know that you do that like 90% of the time and they're like 10% of the time this weird shit happens in your mind. You're not even sure what's happening and you're looking for validation. 
And then you use these phrases, you know, you're discouraged, you're imposter syndrome, self-sabotage. Like, that's not a life that you need to be living, man. It's not a life I want okay. you to live. Okay. I want you to I'll live just... a life. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. I want that life too. Like, whatever you're going to say, like, I would probably agree 100%. It would probably make a lot of sense because you're logical. And But at, at the same time, sometimes I convince myself of, like, bad uh, mental loops or whatever. And I'm like, hey, man, this thing is maybe not like a, like a, like a healthy mindset, but it just kind of works. Mm -hmm. And I'm scared of destroying that. So yeah. I'm like, if I lose that and it's trash, then what? So this is a common problem, okay? So like th there's this idea that caring, and I mean, like, I feel like I'm talking to Pokemon. So like, like if you watch the video from hers, she, we, she actually calls it a whip. So she whips herself and she's a like to be the best. And, and she optimizes a lot of stuff in, in her, like she's always an optimizer and she always strives to be the best. And then she's also really confused because all you guys are confused. And then like, I work with a lot of executives and things like that. All those guys are confused too. How can you continue to perform if you abandon your current system? And the answer is you absolutely can. It, it's, and, and that becomes, that, that's a conversation about another Sanskrit concept called Vairagya, which means detachment. And, and we can kind of go down there, but I want to kind of finish this thing with your dad, if that's okay. Yeah, go ahead. So the short answer is that you can be successful by not caring about other people or even success. Success comes from you picking up the balls that you're juggling and trying to do better than you did the last time. It has yeah. nothing to do with whether you think you're a good person. It has nothing to do whether other people think you're a good person. That is what success depends upon. So you can abandon the rest of all of your psychological shit and your systems and whatever. And as long as every time you pick up a ball... I mean, every time you drop a ball, you pick it up and you try to do better the next time, you're going to be successful. What do you think about that? Shit, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So you don't need any of the rest of this crap that I know you're comforted in because those are the systems that you've developed for yourself. And so you've come mm -hmm. to rely on those. But you can let go of those. And as long as like, because at the end of the day, you could care about what other people think and not focus on becoming a better juggler. And then like you've seen those streamers, right? The streamers that just care about what other people think and don't focus on, it, what did Ninja say? Build their craft or whatever, perfect their craft. Like it's, <laughs> yeah. it's perfection of the craft that leads to success in life. It's devotion to the thing that you are doing that leads to success, not mm -hmm. anything else. Anyway, so we can talk about that later. But kind of coming back to your, your I mean, I think we got to, I mean, I think we got to figure out like, you know, what's the deal with your dad and, and pride? Like, why don't you think your dad is proud of you? And there are good reasons that you think that because he hasn't conveyed that to you sufficiently. I have some hypotheses, but I'm just well, I'm, 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 I'm glad he didn't then because if, if, if he doesn't feel it, then I don't want him to convey it if he doesn't feel like it. If, he doesn't feel, like he, if, he doesn't, if he's not proud of me about something, I don't want him to give me the, the signs that, that, that he is. I feel like that's misleading. Yeah, I completely agree. But then the question is like, why isn't he proud of you? Um, uh, I feel like he w wants and wanted me to perform in certain things that I didn't perform in, like, like schooling, like some of the sports that he wanted me to do. Like when I quit skiing, I went to snowboarding and I stopped competing. I mean, I competed in other ways, like, um, that's kind of like how he wanted me to have success. Even though I, even, even if I found success in other ways, it's still not in, in his like model of how he sees it. And I feel like not achieving that is kind of like, doesn't make him very proud. Okay. A little bit like, like those things were like, yeah, yeah mo no. I like schooling. He always wanted me to do well in school. And I can, I can, I can never care. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. Two questions. So the first thing that I want to toss out to you is that I, I, I think, I wonder why he cares so much about you being successful. Is he successful? Yes, but he's very prideful. Can you tell me about that? Um, well, you know, like, 
um, I feel like I have like a brother, and I feel like I I took much more from my dad than he did. Like my my brother doesn't really have like a like an ego, like a crazy over competitive spirit. Like uh, isn't very like that prideful, right? Uh, isn't like as like self centered. Like I feel like I took like all that from my dad. Um, how do you feel about that? Taking all those things from your dad. Good and bad. These are like double edged swords. Almost all yep. of them. That's the right so answer. The, the, these things fuck you over, but these things make you good sometimes. Also, so sometimes I'm okay with like the downsides because I also get the upsides. So I am not. I'm, I'm not that much allowed to be upset about it. Mm-hmm. By the way, where's your mom in all this? My mom's always there for me in whatever I want, but it, it's not as um, intense. Can you tell me about your mom? My mom's cool. It, 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 she's just not as intense in things. She, if she wants me to do something, if she wants me to be good at something, um, if, if I fail her, if I do her good, like any good or bad, isn't intense mm. and i was really raised with intensity is so your, is your mom proud of you yeah I, I, I yeah i could say so so it's interesting right because like when i ask you is your mom proud you can say yes and i know you've sort of said already that your dad isn't that you're concerned that he may not be proud because you didn't you didn't become the thing that he wanted you to be mm-hmm. right that's so we'll talk about that in a second but i just i think it's interesting how how complex your answer is when it comes to your dad and how simple your answer is when it comes to your mom. Yeah. And, and I wonder if there's a parallel to be drawn between when you're, playing, when, you're, when you're playing poorly and people in the audience are sticking around and they're not leaving, if that's your mom. Yeah. And then... I mean, but it, like I said, it's, it's, uh, I think for me, I, I think, I'm trying to like, um, this is kind of hard to, because it's very introspective, right? Yep. I'm trying to think of the root causes. My, my thoughts is that, like I said, it's like, um, I think it's really all about the intensity. It's like how, how like maybe disappointed or mad that my, that my dad would get if I didn't perform in what he wanted me to do well in and how happy he was and how proud he was when I would do well as with my mom, even if she was really proud of me, um, maybe the way she expressed that what, even though she was extremely excited, wasn't as, uh, as deep or as intense. But it's kind of hard to compete because my dad is like, extremely intense. So maybe my mom was like above average in terms of intensity. My dad was like way, way, way above average. So she can't even compete. So what I'm hearing actually is like, I'm going to toss something out called contingent love. So like, it feels to me like your dad's love was like contingent, like it depended on certain things whereas your mom's sounds like it wasn't quite as dependent like so so yeah. another, maybe another way to put it is that your dad's love was conditional and your mom's love was unconditional okay that's a little bit of a dark thought but yep it it it, 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 it could make sense yeah yeah i mean w- what's dark about that that's a strong word it's all yeah um conditional that's a strong it's, it's a strong word how did how does it make you feel to hear it? Um, well, I don't want to hold my parents and throw them in the, under the bus and hold them to such labels. Fair. So let's talk about that for a second. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times I will use strong words to amplify what is low in the person I'm talking to. Yeah. For the record, I think it sounds like your parents are amazing and wonderful people. And I think they've done, it sounds like a good job raising you. I'm not hearing any kind of abuse or any kind of shit like that. I think this is just how human beings work. Like, so I think my parents were wonderful as well, but I still had hang ups. So can I tell you a story? Yeah. yeah. So when I was, let me just think about where to start this story. So when I was um, finishing up my, my training in, in Boston, 
I had done a really good job. So I was like, I distinguished myself in some ways um, and, and was at a, a, a pretty competitive kind of institution where there are a lot of bright people. And so I'd kind of distinguished myself. And then I had a mentor who had been supporting me for like six years and um, started to become kind of paranoid that like I had created this thing and I was like afraid that he was going to like take it over. And I had some reason to believe that, but like I, I'd kind of thought that this okay. was something that... I, I, I stop you. I, I, I don't want to go into the story more. Of, um, with lack of precision, I, I kind of felt like I, I, I missed a part of the story. Sure. Um, you were doing well, better than some of the bright people or whatever, and then you... And then what? And then I got paranoid that one of my mentors was going to take credit for my work. Oh, okay. So what I'd done is I'd created a program. So I'd created something called a consult service where people with mental health problems could come and learn like meditation and use herbs and, and other kinds of like Eastern stuff to help with their anxiety and their depression. And it was going very, very well because a lot of people are interested in that and it works really well. And I was afraid that one of my mentors would basically take over that program, which I had essentially built from the ground up. Mm -hmm. And it was really weird because the guy had been nothing but supportive. And so yeah. I, I was doing some kind of introspective work and actually learning a particular kind of therapy at that time. And as part of learning that therapy, I had to do my own, I like was kind of playing the role of the patient. So I was examining my own issues. And so we came up with this issue for me to work on. And what I realized is that, is that like this fear that someone who has been nothing but supportive is going to take away what I've built actually comes from my childhood. And when I was 13 years old, this was back before the internet was a thing or even younger, there used to be th these things called bulletin board systems, BBSs. And back before there was a centralized internet, what, what happened is you had a phone line and you would connect to one other computer through a phone line. And so yep. what I did is uh, my, my computer was a server that I hosted games on. And then like there would be all these kids at school who would dial into my computer and use my server to take their turns in the game. And then like 30 kids would play like this awesome game called Baron Realms Elite, which is still an awesome game. So it's kind of like, it's kind of like Clash of Kings and stuff now. It's sort of like you take your turn every day, you spend resources, you build armies, you attack other people and it's like competitive. You're like, you're like Travian or whatever, you know that website? No. Yes, yeah, whatever. That's okay. Whatever. So, so, but back then, like, so, so not, uh, so uh, we had two phone lines at my home. So I hosted the server. And then what I would do is charge 10 bucks a, a week for people to get access to my server. And it became okay. like a super popular thing. And I was making like 300 bucks a week. And like, that was a lot of money back in like 1990. Oh, for sure. And, and so, you know, I, I created this thing. And then like, the funny thing is like, my parents were, uh, I'm, I'm lucky. I'm, I'm the son of two physicians. So my parents like had a big house and like they basically bought me whatever I wanted. I didn't need any money. So I was like making money and I was making money for the sake of making money. And I didn't have any way to spend it. Because like if I wanted something, they would just get it for me. Or I mean, they would get yeah. it for me if my grades and stuff were good. And so like one day, like, like my dad found this gigantic wad of cash. And he was like, what is this? And, and then I was like, well... I stole it. And he was like, I'm balling, dude. <laughs> and I was like, no, man. I, he's like, you didn't steal it. He's like, what is this? And he's like, I told him, I, like, I was like, I started a business. Yeah. And I'm making a bunch of money. And so then what he did is he took the money away and he shut down the business. And he said, you've got to focus on your studies. And like, he was actually like proud of me because he like knew that I was an entrepreneur and all that kind of crap. So he was like kind of proud, but he also like shut it off, right? Like he did what, what I mean, I think is reasonable for a parent to do. Which is to say, like, you should really be focusing on studying. Like, you should do what I think you should do instead of doing what you think you should do. Sound familiar with your dad, by the way? And, uh, yeah. And, and then, like, I realized that in some ways, like, that left a psychological imprint. My dad was, like, a great person, and he loved me a lot, and he was a great guy. But if you just listen to me talk about that story and how it affected me today, mm -hmm. that's where my paranoia was born. That someone who cares about me, and it's a very specific pattern. It's that someone who cares about me, like, is going to take away what I've built. Okay. Right? It doesn't make um, him a bad person. It's just like, that's what happens because our psychology is imperfect. And young minds are impressionable. And like, they yeah. don't understand the complexity of what our parents send us. Yeah. Okay. And so in uh, your... Uh, go ahead. 
Well, I, I, I have something like that then. Tell me. I think. Um, I can't think of something like very much in the past, much more something like kind of, kind of recent in, in, you know, a time where like, I'm looking for that validation or I'm looking for that effect and, and I didn't get it. And it kind of like, it didn't mark me, but kind of did. Um, I had just swapped because I used to play another game on stream and I had swapped to this new game, Overwatch. And I was streaming it. And um, I was really good at the game. But then I started streaming it a lot, right? I put like a lot of hours and I, I was enjoying myself a lot. At the same time, you know, I care about being good, being whatever. I still care about the stream a lot because, you know, I, I want the stream to feel like it's, it's going forward, just like my rank and my, my, and my playing like pedigree or career or whatever. And um, it's very really hard first because my English, my English was really bad. It's, the, it's still it's not the best, but I just felt like I wanted to do that in English because I used to stream in French. And that's what I wanted to do. And I wanted to do good. And then I just felt like there's no way, there's no way I, could, I, I could ever do it because who would listen to some guy who doesn't speak English properly? And I just felt like kind of like the world is against me type of thing, but I still did it. And I would get like small milestones, like, oh man, look today, we, you know, we had like two subs or something. And after a while, after like a, a crazy amount of like grind, if you want, or whatever, I got this, um, it was like Christmas there or something. And I had a total of like, I think it was 212 subs. I remember it was like 220 or 212 or something. And I was like, I cannot believe it. I think I've just peaked or something. Like I've plateaued. Like this is, this is it. This, this, this is like, holy shit. I can't believe that 200 people would subscribe to my channel, dude. And they don't know what the fuck I'm saying, you know? Um, and then I turned the stream off and I had to go to this, um, at the time I was, I wasn't living with my parents anymore. So I had to go to this, uh, Christmas party, right? So I showed up, I showed up like, like 10 minutes later or something. Cause I, you know, I was streaming and I, I turned it off. I, I, I rushed there and I started talking to my dad a little bit and the family. And then I talked to my dad and I'm like, yeah, you wouldn't believe it. Like today, like I, against all these other people that are, that are like competing, you know? Like I have had had this many subs or whatever, and I have this much value to my channel. Well, that's crazy. And then he kind of just uh, kind of just looked me like to the side, and he just kind of said, uh, "Okay, so when does that make you go back to school?" And I'm like, "Fuck, man!" And he just kind of crushed me. Yeah, man. You know? Does that make sense? Makes a lot of sense. Yeah, that's crushing. So now I felt like uh, it wouldn't matter like what the numbers would be at, because I felt like that was like a crazy number. Even though uh, I felt like it didn't matter, because any any direction in that path, any any heights, it wouldn't matter. It'd be irrelevant. That's why I started making those systems where I get validations from in other forms, because I clearly wasn't getting it there, you know. Yeah, I think it goes a little bit. I mean, that's rough, man. I'm, I got emotional hearing that because I, I think we all knew where that was going. But yeah, I, I think so. So here's the thing, Felix. Don't don't get distracted. Yeah. What are you? Sorry, you're looking around. No, 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 no. no, no it, it's okay. I had like, some Discord stuff up, pop up. Yeah. I'm fine now. Okay. Yeah. So I think here's the problem. You say that yep. you needed to create systems of validation because you weren't getting validation from your dad. I think the issue here is it's not validation that you weren't getting from your dad. It is fundamental sense of value. Okay. Does that make sense? Like there's a difference. Yeah, like, uh, it does. Right? So like that was the moment that instead of your value as a human being here, it came down over here. Because here you were proud of yourself and you said, look, I did something. I'm proud. I accomplished something. And then you were up here and then your dad moved you down here. In yeah. that moment, that's when, so that's not validation. It's, it's devaluing. And then you need validation to fill that gap. Mm -hmm. 
But before that moment, I don't know that you needed any validation. Does that make sense? Yeah. So like validation, yeah. like the problem with validation is that like your intrinsic sense of value, and now we kind of go back to the beginning of the conversation, is like, you know, imposter syndrome is because you don't believe that the person on stage deserves to be there. It's a statement of intrinsic value. And then you need validation because that's the only way you can get back up because you believe you, you're starting down here, right? It's the fucking bike with the broken chain. Your whole <laughs> life. Yeah, it's a bike with a broken fucking chain. Yeah. Definitely is. And that's like, that's sad, bro. Is that it? this is the life? Yeah. Because the thing is, you don't have a broken chain. You you are a thousand dollar bike. Pog. Yeah. But you don't see yourself that way. Yeah. I agree with that. And that's sad. Is what it? Are you feeling? Yeah. Mm. Don't feel much regarding that. Um I don't know. I have like, um, it doesn't really, I don't want to like oversell myself, but it doesn't really take me a lot to go on. Right? Like, it doesn't really, uh, like, to like do well or do better or improve. Like, there aren't like a lot of requirements that I need to, yeah. to, to, to go in and, and do shit. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want it. Yeah, I feel more fulfilled if I get it, but it's, it's just, it's just sometimes I feel like I'm more like solid on that without like, trying to like, you know, sound like a high ego Andy or something. No, no, I don't think it's high ego. Let, let me, let me put it. I think it's a problem, buddy. <clears throat> yeah, I think so too. Why do you think it's a problem? Mm, I feel like maybe it, it makes me like settle, settle for less or something. In, like um, in a certain way, it may, um, makes me like be okay with like trash. Yeah, absolutely. So I, well, I'm gonna put it a different way, okay? So you're not feeling a whole lot right now, right? No. Why do you think it is that other people have difficulty giving their best? Because you're saying that I don't have difficulty giving my best, right? Mm hmm. Why do you think other people, like, what gets in the way of other people giving their best? I don't know. I have no clue. I, I, I thought about it for a whole minute. I have no clue. Okay. So, do you feel a whole lot of emotions, Felix? Mm, I'd say less than average. Yeah. So I think part of what makes other people, makes it hard for other people to give their best is that they've got like internal shit that like bogs them down. Okay. And I don't know exactly what you mean by settle for less, but I think part of you giving it your all lets you forget about a lot of things that are probably, I imagine, hurtful to you. It definitely does. And, and I think what we're running up against, which is interesting because what you're saying is like some pretty, like, you know, you'll say the word crushing and then the only sign that you have emotional activation is the amount of distraction which you have in your face and where your eyes go. So the only sign of emotion that I see in you, so you can recognize that something is crushing. You can recognize these things and you're learning them, but you're not feeling anything. You'll look at your mm -hmm. hands, you'll get distracted by discord. Maybe it was discord. Maybe I'm reading too much into it. I have no idea. It was really basically one time over the last however long we've been talking that you've like broken eye contact with your screen in like in a particular moment. You kind of like looked at your hands for a second. Yeah. And, and I don't know. So I think you've got feelings down there that are pushed so far down because you've constructed a system of like being your best self and competing and like, I, I think that, you know, you can say it was crushing, but do you remember how it felt when you came to your dad and you were like, I got 200 subs, I've peaked, I've made it on Twitch. 
Yeah. I think I remember. Yeah. I think I, I yeah. yeah. Well, how did it feel? Mm. It just felt like, like, um, like I felt like so ready to, to get something and they had the exact opposite. You know, sometimes you kind of like mm -hmm. protect yourself with like, um, uh, some like expectations or something, yeah. right? Not to expect much. So I don't really like, you know, like a fishing rod. Sometimes, you know, um, you know, you don't expect too much. You know, you put it like close, you know, whatever. But that, that was like an, I overextended. Like I'm all in like, like yep. I know I'm not, I know so, I'm going to get it. So Felix, when, why do we protect ourselves like that? Why do we expect so little from the fishing rod? Where does that protection come from? So, like, what are we tanking? What do right? you mean? So, you're saying, you said something about, you know, having low expectations and how low expectations are protective. Yeah. Okay, so, like, you play Overwatch, right? So, like, you know, those low expectations are like Reinhardt and his shield. And, like, what's yeah. behind Reinhardt? Like, what are we, mm. what are we tanking there? If those, if low ex, if you didn't set artificially low expectations for yourself, what would happen? Um, more intense dis disappointment when you don't get it. Absolutely, and even then, more intense disappointment is a really cerebral way of saying it hurts. Okay, you're protecting yourself from hurt. Yeah, I don't use those words very often. You don't use those words very often. That I know. Yeah. So you're okay. you're hyperanalytical and you're alexithymic. What alexithymic means is that you're unaware of what your internal emotional state is. And I don't think you, like, you can use words like crushing. You can use physical words, right? You can use words that are like crushing is like a physical thing. Mm -hmm. It has a representation in the real world. And men do this often. It's like, you know, you can talk, like, you don't talk about pride or satisfaction. You talk about, like, rolling noobs. Yeah. Right, that's an emotion. Rolling noobs is like it's an emotion, but you just don't yeah. have the language. And everyone understands what we mean because our whole generation is like emotionally stunted. Because mm -hmm. we play video games and stuff, and like we don't spend time like inside ourselves. It really is. And and I think that buddy, like, so uh, you know, I'm gonna offer a couple of thoughts because I don't really know exactly what where to explore from here, and I I kind of want to say. So I've also sure. noticed something that when we explore too far, we lose some of the things that we learned at the beginning. Yeah, and there's good sure. data to that. So I, I'm I'm going to try to leave you with a couple of thoughts. The first thing is, I, I think you've really got to think long and hard about you know how you feel about your dad not being proud of you. Mm -hmm. And and because I I just don't think that you deserve a life where like your value is down here when it's really up here. Because you are a thousand dollar bike, you're not, and there's a certain amount of like, you know, underdog pride with with being down here and still achieving up here. Like I can sympathize with that. There's a mm -hmm. certain pride in that, but I just don't. I, I just don't think that like when it comes to the self sabotage and imposter syndrome and all this kind of shit. You know, because people people do genuinely care about you. I mean, I'm making assumptions here, but I'm pretty sure. Because that's what I've seen from Twitch chat. Everyone talks about Twitch chat like they're they're toxic, but I think that there's like a lot of genuine caring and respect. There is, yeah. And and I think I think it's I mean it's it's got to like it's got to be about your dad. And by about what I mean is like I, I think you've got to you know maybe at some point first of all figure out how you feel, and then then engage your dad. I don't know if you guys have ever talked about like what success means to him. And why he cares so much. So the last thing that I want to leave you with is that all this shit about your dad's expectations on you are probably coming from his own sense of not doing good enough. Because that's what parents do. Okay, that could, that, that could, I could see that. Right? So if he's hyper competitive and egotistical, and he has a son who is far more successful than he'll ever be, which I don't know if that's true or not. I don't know how successful he is, and I don't really know how successful you are. Like, I don't mm -hmm. really know, right? But if that thought is in his head, that could be difficult for him to sit with. But that's not, that's not something that should lower your value. That's something that he needs to deal with. 
Okay. Like, why does he need his son to be number one? In, okay. in, um, yeah, in, in, a, in a realm where that couldn't change, then what? Is it not okay to have systems where you, where you get that from or other things? If you, if you, if, if, let's say he did it, if that all he said was the truth and he couldn't change, then what? So you're absolutely right. So the systems are there for a damn good reason. Right. So like, like what I'm, yeah. So then what, then I think you guys accept you grieve and you move past it. And what that means is like, you know, if I'm juggling and I drop a ball, then what Felix? Let me try again. Absolutely. Right. So it, like, like you, you don't let that failure stop you. Mm -hmm. So if your dad, like your dad needs to figure out like why he wants his son to be so successful, like, does he derive personal pride and ego from your successes? Because that happens a lot with parents. And then the second thing is why can't he accept your success for what it is? Why does it have to look like his success? Okay. That's, that's it. Then you have it. Then I have what? Um, I feel like that question is, is the right one. Yeah, I, or the most, the most, the most valid one out, out of all of them. Exactly, and that comes yeah. from a conversation with him. And the cool thing is that once you can have that conversation with him, and you can get the answer to that question, then you're no longer down here because what put you down here is like his impression of what's valuable. Mm -hmm. Then you're back up here, and then you're you know you're a thousand dollar bike riding a thousand dollar bike, like that's what you are. You're not like a broken chain. Because if okay. we look at your actual performance, we see the performance of a thousand dollar bike, not the performance of a broken chain. Mm -hmm. And that you've demonstrated time and time and time again by schooling noobs and trampolines, schooling noobs and skiing, schooling noobs right and left and center. Right? You're competing with like your dad sends you in to compete with kids with multi thousand dollar bikes and you've got a broken chain. You're fucking winning a race and you have to stop and pull over and reattach a chain. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I in, in, in those moments, I felt like um, I was upset that I wouldn't, get, I wouldn't get the result, but I was very much like self, self rewarded. I had, yep. I had a good men, uh, mental loop because, yeah, it sucks. I don't get on the podium, but at the same time, I was like, dude, if I had a bike as good as theirs, I know, like, it's not, it doesn't come from like uh, overvaluing my value. Like, I would have fucked this guy over. I yeah. would have rolled them, right? Uh, and and that that thought was enough. Yeah, I'm with you. I I, I think. Okay. Yeah. Right. So, but but the problem here is that you don't think that way about yourself now, right? You think yeah, the opposite. Mm, probably not. Yeah, exactly. Right. Makes sense. So, like, I think, and and then we kind of ask a little bit about won't I become not successful? No, absolutely not, because that is actually when you're your truest self. It's when you don't derive value from an external thing. Do you see that? In that yeah. moment, you're not deriving value from being on stage. You're deriving value from a true sense of what you're putting in and what you're capable of. Mm -hmm. Then you don't care about the audience. And can you be successful? Absolutely. Yeah. Thoughts? Questions? No, this, is all, this, is all, this all makes sense. Um... Is it uh, overall unhealthy um, in the in the grand scheme of things, like lifestyle, to to let's say not care about your, uh, about what your parents think, or like build yourself in in an environment where um, you get like a combined other things that make up for that, or make up for the make up for their value or their. Um, so I think the healthiest thing is to, it's not to not care. It's to recognize what part of my parents' value of me is fair and what part is unfair. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Because okay. their valuation of you is not perfect. Yeah, I think that that's the problem. Where um, growing up, you can't really can't really tell since they're your parents, they're above you, so they're they know shit. 
but sometimes they do things um just like we do like like i do now like we're, we're human right that are that are that are wrong but i still see it as right because i don't know any better so yep. like they they play their cards perfectly and that's how they really feel about me but maybe that's how they feel about themselves or some external uh, other source right and then i you feel you, i feel like you kind of build like a just uh, unhealthy conclusions absolutely right so i think the general strategy like so when i say you know you have to see what's fair and unfair i, I like you said you think that they're perfect when you're a child and they're certain not perfect and we don't blame them for that right because they mm. also like they're not perfect so how can you expect perfection from them so i think the strategy felix is damage control not perfection Okay. It's not being perfect. It's in recognizing like, so the way forward is to have conversations with them where then you can through conversation with them, like recognize, okay, what is my dad saying? That's fair. And what is he saying? That's unfair. And then okay. once you recognize that it's unfair, <clears throat> you let it go. Fine. That's good. Right. It's like that shit's on him. Like if he's not happy with me having a broken chain bike, and not winning first place, like that's an unreasonable expectation. And if he doesn't want to be proud of me for that, then so be it. I'm going to okay. make my case about why he should be proud of me. Yeah. Right? I need to explain to him. And, and, and then that gives him the opportunity to also grow because you're not the only one that needs to do growing in this relationship. And it's kind of like a continual process in the same way that you like wake up the next day and you try to be better. That's what both of you guys need to do for your relationship. And then you'll end up hopefully both being like happy and accepting and loving each other. And, and sure. you know, he'll be proud of you and you'll know that he's genuinely proud of you and he can accept that you aren't him. Right. You're not his perfect dream of himself. You're you and you have your own shit that you care about and your own values. And there are parts of you that there are parts of him that live within you, but there are also parts of your mom. There are parts of you that are a little bit more chill. There are parts of you that say that I'm going to stop skiing and like snowboard because it's fun and I'm still going to do a really good job, but it's going to be less intense. Mm -hmm. okay. And that he needs to judge you for who you are, not who he wants you to be. And even in that, you may fall short in some ways. He may say, okay, Felix, I agree with you that you know, you've been successful and I'm proud of you, but I still think X, Y, Z. Yeah. And then for you to say, okay, dad, that's fair. Or that isn't fair. And then you guys come to an accord and that's a healthy relationship. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think I'm, uh, I think I'm getting there. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I, I understand like the, like the full scope of a, uh the full scope of things it's almost like at the same time it's kind of like um most people that do good on twitch are kind of like uh like degenerates or i mean mo i mean not most of us i'm not going to put the us on the same boat but it's kind of like almost kind of like uh like being like a failure or something and being like a bum mm -hmm. right being such a bum that is like one of the like things that make you makes you good on twitch or something that's also something that that um doesn't sit well with your, your parents. So I think it's kind of weird to be uh, kind of like rewarded for such like, is that, am, I, am I getting there? Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes perfect sense. And I, I think there's, okay. a, there's a difference in value between the boomer generation and our generation. Mm -hmm. There's like a conversation that needs to be had. Like basically, I mean, I have this conversation with my parents too about like where value comes from, right? So she, she, she has certain ideas about like, what I should be. And, and we just have to have a conversation about like, you know, some of the ways that I raise my kids and, and things like that. And, and so she's like, oh, that's not the right way to do it. Right. Your, your dad's issue is that you're not successful in the right ways. Yeah. Uh, that's it. And, and like, this is just like, they don't get to determine what's right. Right. We have our own perspective and we don't get to determine what, what's right either. Like what's right comes like from a conversation and an accord between the two of us. And I mean, I think, you know, I don't, I wish I'm going to have to think a little bit, Felix, because I think just a couple of closing thoughts. So I think there are a couple things you can work on. One is, you know, to think about how to have a conversation with your dad, because I think that actually needs to happen at some point. Um, 
And, and the second though, is to really figure out, like, I, I do think you're alexithymic, which means you don't really, you're not really in touch with your emotions. And, mm-hmm. and I don't know if you, I mean, sometimes like people who are not really in touch with their emotions, they come out in other ways, like oftentimes frustration or anger or toxicity. And so I think a big part of toxicity on the internet and on Twitch comes from like people having these kinds of issues where like your dad is fundamentally not proud of you. And like, that's hard to live with like every single day. Right. And that hurts. And then like, what happens when we get hurt? Like if I slap you across the face, what are you going to do? Yeah. Ow, ow, ouchie. And then what? Uh, and then I have to wait till it heals. Sure. But you're not going to hit back. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe not. Okay. I mean, oh, so, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, I feel like I'm not giving you the, the correct, the correct no, no, that, no, uh, but, but, passage but, that we, I should. No, no, no. But, but that's, that's perfectly fine. Right. So it's not like, once again, it's not me. It's not for me to know what the correct answer is. When you give me mm. an answer that I'm not expecting, which you're spot on, that's not, that wasn't what I expecting. I don't try to convince you that I'm right. I stop and put myself in your shoes. And yeah. then the truth is going to be somewhere in the middle. Okay. So let me put a, a better analogy that'll give me the answer that I want, right? When someone, like when you're playing a game of Overwatch and you, like, you know, they take the point or whatever, and then you're like, yeah, I'm going to fuck them, right? Yeah. You hit yeah. back. Yeah. And, and so when, when we're hurt, what we respond with is anger. Okay. And I was reading, I mean, so I sort of realized this one day when I was reading one of the manifestos of one of these school tutors. And at the mm. bottom of all of that, man, yeah, go ahead. Okay, fuck. I, I feel like I, I ruined your story. No, um, go for it. I feel like over time, I have this new sort of system or loop that I do where when things like that happen, where something or somebody punches, right? I, I punch, but not by using like my fist or something. Does that make sense? Sure. I punch another way that's more uh, like subtle or, or like calculated or something, mm-hmm. right? Where somebody like fucks me over, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna fuck them over. I'm gonna, this is a, a, you're fuck, gonna I, dismantle I, them. Yeah. Like yeah. they'll lose. Yeah. You're okay. Yeah, I'm with you. We could get into that too. That's, that's a cold anger. It's not a hot anger. Okay. Right. There's a, but the anger is still there, my friend. Mm hmm. Right. It's just, it's just not, you're not gonna hit back. You're gonna, Say ow, and then you're gonna figure out how to dismantle me. Over okay, time. That, that that's interesting. Then yeah, yeah, I I like that thought. Yeah, that's still anger. Yep. I like that. Yep. Because sometimes I'll like, I guess falsely, uh, tell myself I'll be like, Nah, man, like that. You know, that's you're not doing it out of anger. You know, like uh, I'm just doing that because it's it's the right thing, or like I'm 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 giving myself like a self righteous type a- a- angle, but it's still it's still trash. You know. No, it's... it may not be trash. Okay. <laughs> That's a whole different issue, right? So so okay. what your actions may be just, but your actions being just and and whether there whether there's anger there are separate or separate questions. Mm-hmm. Right, because if I smack you a- across the face, like you hurting me in some way could be just. But I, I think it, it doesn't surprise me that you don't feel anger, but it's a cold fury because I think mm-hmm. the, the bigger thing is like, so I, and anyway, so I think there are like two general directions, Felix, that you need to go. The three, actually. So one, you're mm-hmm. already doing and really good at, and that's to learn and analyze your systems, which I think you've done a phenomenal job. I don't think we could have gotten this far in the conversation unless you had a pretty good attention to the systems that you develop over time, even if they don't make perfect sense to you, you know what they are at least, which is awesome. So continue learning because there may be subtleties which you're not aware. Second right. thing is, I think at some point you've got to settle this shit with your dad, and that could be through a conversation with him. It could be through therapy. It could be through any number of things. But this is this thing is not at peace, right? Like there's something about like you still accept his view on some level, and that needs to be dealt like done away with. Mm-hmm. The third thing is that I think you need to better understand what your emotions are and what you're feeling, because I think you've got all kinds of stuff. When you talk about these thought loops, I think the fuel for those kinds of thought loops and negative thought patterns comes from, uh, because you call them thought, right? All you experience is the thoughts, but like 
where is the fuel for that coming from? It's probably coming from suppressed immune system. Yeah. Um, and, and so the third kind of dimension for your growth is to like, you know, to put it bluntly, get in touch with your feelings. And I don't know if you're like in a romantic relationship or, or what the deal is there, but like when it comes to those, like, you know, getting this shit in order is like really important to having like a healthy romantic relationship. Because unless you know, like when she, he or she does something that upsets you, like if you don't feel that upset and can't vocalize that to her, you're just going to dismantle her or him, depending on what your sexual preference is. Okay. You know, and, and so we can talk about relationships or whatever at a different point, but does that make sense? Like you've got to know like what's going on. Yeah. It makes a lot of sense. I understand that. Thoughts or questions before we wrap up? No, I think I understand. Um, yeah, these things make a lot of sense. The takeaways from today? You mind if I ask? Wait, what time is it? I don't, I don't know. Do you oh. want to keep talking? Feels like we've been on. Oh, oh I, I, I didn't look at the time. I lost track of time. Oh, I enjoyed that. That was, the, that was really good. Um, not really. I mean, I, I have like, it's almost like every topic has like a bunch of branches. I was like, yep. oh, I could go there. This is this, 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 that. Okay. Oh, we're doing that instead. This is this, this, that. Okay. We're doing... And, and, you know, I, I, I feel, I feel complete, but does that make sense? Like, um, mm -hmm. there's still a lot left to talk about. Yeah. It's okay though. Yeah. I, I was wondering if you could try to summarize, cause like, you know, people are watching, like, what do you think? What do you think are some highlights? Like, what do you think are some of the key points? What are the, not the branches, but like, you know, the big stems that then could be explored? The big stems that can be explored. Yeah. What are the things that you took away from the conversation, if anything? Oh, uh, okay. Um, I think like sometimes you say something, right? Like a statement. And it kind of simplifies uh, my viewpoint on it. Like, I'll like overcomplicate something, or I'll see like uh, in a weird way, and then you will say like, "Oh, like like earlier when you said that's still anger, right?" It's such a simple answer, but it's like a, it's just like a simple thought, but it, it resonates a lot. And there's a couple of things that you did that you said like that, that you said like that, like "Oh, like earlier when you said, oh, that's pain," but you say uh, you said uh, you say it in another way or something, mm -hmm. like um. Um, and these things are easy to, easy to take home. They're easy to, okay. Cause it, yeah, I like that a lot. It, it, it's, it simplifies it. It makes it way more approachable mentally. Like it's not, oh, it's not all broken or it's not like a, it's not, it's not complicated. It's like a, a crazy process. It's as simple as, you know, that's just a feeling or just that. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for sharing. Um, that. yeah. Do you? Um, no, go ahead. No, no, uh, I was going to say nothing. Um, I was going to say, so sometimes I teach people meditation. Are you interested in that? Um, I'm not really good at it. Where I used to do, um, maybe you've heard about this before, since you're in that sort of field. I did um, biofeedback and uh -huh. neurofe neurofeedback. Uh -huh. You heard about that? Yep. Okay. And uh, I had to learn how to like, breathe and 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 sort of meditate because they kind of, they kind of go like hand in hand right yeah like breathing properly like uh what's it called again Dude, I, I, I keep um when you breathe through like the bottom of the lungs or something abdominal like, breathing yeah that okay so but, uh, you're you're not good at it yeah um i'm not good at getting a hold of my thoughts like if i'm Okay, okay. Let me put it this way. Ready? This is a little bit of a different time. Uh, I don't want to waste your time. Uh, uh, is this going to take too long? No, go for it. I mean, are you like on a set, set schedule? It's like very tight? Let me check real quick. Sure. And don't worry if it is. Like, I'm not going to nope. get mad. It's like... Uh, no, no, no. I, just, I, I, I appreciate your consideration, man. Yeah, sure. It's very kind of you. Nope, we're good. Okay. So... Um, are you familiar with uh, Tetris syndrome or whatever? Tetris syndrome? Yeah. No. Where you do an action uh, for so long and so much time in one day or a couple of days that even when you're not doing it, it's still happening in your head. Okay. Like, 
like I've been playing a lot of chess on and off stream. And the entire time we talked today, like literally the entire time I had a che- I had pieces uh, I-, I could visibly see, like almost in my vision. And they kept just kept moving the whole time. And I kept like practicing like uh, certain moves or something. Does that make sense? Yep. Like it's it's like it's so vivid that it's like um it's always there, right? And I do that with like streaming and playing games to where even when I'm not doing them, it's like always happening. Like I'm I'm I keep playing in my head. Like it, it's it's always there. So whenever I try to like meditate or calm down, it's really hard to not think about anything or think about something and just kind of like let things flow, you know, uh, I mean, eh, without being completely disrupted by my head just playing that game again or, or doing that action that I did all day. It's just so overwhelming, right? So it's all, yeah. Okay. Thanks for sharing that. Very so helpful. It's kind of hard to get hold of my thoughts whenever I, I try to like calm and chill like it gets yeah, out of control really fast. I think the problem is not that you need to get a hold of your thoughts. I think you need to let them go. Okay. That's why you're not good at meditating because meditating is not about holding on to your thoughts. It's about letting them go. It's like you're moving in the opposite direction. Okay. Right. It's sort of like, you know, so Felix, how do you go to sleep? I usually just exhaust myself. I can't, I, I, I haven't really, um, I actually gone to sleep in, I don't know, the longest time. I yeah. I just, uh, yeah. Right. So, so, so sleep is not something that you can do. It's something that you have to like, it like, it has to happen to you. Right. So sleep yeah. is not about, you don't go to sleep. You let sleep take you. And what you have to do to let sleep take you is to be very, very exhausted. Otherwise sleep won't come and take you. Does that make sense? You don't do it. Yeah. It it does you. Like it's the other way around. Yeah. And so I think you absolutely need to meditate, but you need to meditate in the opposite direction from what you're trying to do. And I just need a second to think about how to do that. I have a particular technique that I think would work very well for you. It's just we can't do it on stream is the problem. Okay. What is it? Um, just, so just, so just, what I tell people to do is like, so I, you know, I used to teach this stuff in, in a hospital, like in my office. And so what I would do is take people down to the cafeteria of the hospital. And I tell them to close their eyes and listen to as many sounds that they hear as quickly as they can for a short amount of time as possible. So mm-hmm. just listen to like a glass clinking over here. Someone's on their phone. Someone's walking by. Someone spilled something. There's a baby crying. Someone, you know, banged silverware together. There's a cash register that dinged. There's another cell phone. Someone's coming down the stairs. There's an elevator that beeped. You know, there's someone's, something's moving over here. There's a dog barking and just to listen to as many sounds as you can, as quickly as you can. Okay. If you want to meditate, what you need to do is not slow your mind down. You need to speed it up. Okay. So there's a, there's a good kind of saying in meditation, which is how do you get a monkey to sit still, which is like hard to translate into the West because we don't have monkeys. Um, and, and, you know, if you want a monkey to sit still, what you have to do is exhaust it. Right. You can't like force a monkey. You can't hold it in place. It's just going to go crazier and crazier and crazier. And so what we need to do for you to meditate is for meditation to take you, you need to exhaust your mind. And, and I'd almost say like, let me just think. I mean, do you want to try something or or you're okay just, I mean, I'm not trying to pressure you. I just want to know where you are. Anything. I I, I don't mind. Okay. We uh, we can do whatever. So what what does that do when you think about a lot of sounds? What does that do? Uh, I'm going to show you. Okay. Just give me a second. I think showing you is going to be way easier than telling you. I just have to think about how much to engage your mind. Okay. Um, So I want you to sit up straight. 
Let me think, let me think, let me think. We don't want to overdo it. That's okay. Maybe he's, it'll be easier. So I wonder if doing things with your body is going to be easier. Are you stick? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we want to go. How, how tall? Are you? You're tall? Yeah, I'm 6'2". Okay. Yeah. Um, sure, we can do something standing. So. Okay. okay. Let's do something standing. All right. Check. All right. So yeah. it's going to be really simple. Well, let's just see what happens, okay? Okay, sounds good. We're going to. Uh, so there that I was asking you to s sit up straight, but you're standing now. So let's run with it. Well, it means sit up straight. I don't know what that means. So it means just sit, sit with your back straight. That's okay. Don't worry about it. We'll, we'll no, you should just tell me. I, I, is it better if I, if I sit down then? No, no, no. We're going to run with it. I think this is great. Okay, I'm going to stand okay. up too. I just got to figure out. So I, it's just a uh, language barrier. I didn't yep. think about it. I, I, I can, it's, it's, it's not a big deal. Okay. So, this is what I want you to do. So stand up straight. Yeah. Feet together, arms by your side. And then I want you to, as you inhale, I want you to raise your arms. And then at the top. Oh, all the way to the top. Breath. So I was closing my eyes. I don't know why I closed my eyes. Okay, you I'll close do it your eyes, it's fine. All right, and then exhale. Yeah. And as you exhale, I want you to bring your arms down to where when you fully exhale, your arms should be at the bottom. So you want okay. to match the inhalation with the, uh, match the movement of your arms with your breath. Okay. Okay? So yeah. breathe in. And then out. Way too fast. So too fast? fast? Yeah. Okay. So, so I want you to look at the pacing of my arms and, and follow your breath along. Sure. And then out. Now, is your breath matching your arms or no? No. So you got to focus on that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, your arms should not be moving. Your arms should only be moving while you are breathing in or out. Okay. And when your honest, breath I, is full, when I, when I was about this one, I was already done. Yeah. So then you need to slow down your breath. Okay, I'll do okay. one. Slowing down your breath? That was perfect. Huh? That was perfect. That was perfect. Okay, so close your eyes and, and do five of them on your own, okay? Keep them slow. Good, again. Good. Keep going. Now keep your arm movements even. So you can't speed up or slow down. It has to be even with your breath the entire time. Again. Good. Keep going. And now I want you to tell me, as you're keeping track of your breath and your arms, I want you to tell me about which chest moves you see in your mind. Do you see chest moves in your mind? No. I didn't see them for a while. Think about them and continue doing the practice. Try to recall a chess game. Keep your breath even, keep your arms even. Think about chess. 
Keep your arms and breath slow, keep it even, and think about chest at the same time. Guys. Too fast. Slow down. Slow breath, slow, slow, slow breath, even arms. Even and slow. Yeah, good. What's happening? I'm failing. Good, why? Because I'm doing one or the other robotically. So let your full attention return to the breath. Arms up, slow, even, and then down, smooth. Notice that your arms may be getting tired, so be it. We're going to do three more. As slowly, smoothly, and evenly as you can. And out. Again. And out. And last one. Slow, smooth, and even. And out. Let your eyes remain closed. Spread your feet apart a little bit and just sit in your mind. Notice the slow, natural breath, that your breath is naturally way slower. Focus on the sensation in your arms and let your attention bounce between your breath and your arms, whichever one feels better. And let it sit with one for a while and when it's ready to move, let it move. Move what? Move to something else. If thoughts come, you can notice those thoughts. If the chest pieces come back, let them come back. And then focus on the sensation in your arms. Focus on the slowing of breath. We'll continue for about 30 seconds. When you're ready, go ahead and sit back down, open your eyes, and tell me how you feel. That was good. That was what, good. What does that mean? Um, something weird happened. It was kind of like, <laughs> <laughs> what is that? <laughs> no, it's just like, a, that's what we're here for. <laughs> that means you did it right. Okay. Um. I just, since I was looking for thoughts, when I moved away from trying to look for a feeling in my arms or, or my chest, whatever, I could like random, random, like scenes would like pop in my head and I would just kind of like go along because I knew that it was part of the process and I would move back to my arms again. And then I would think, oh, what did I think about last time? And then something would pop up and I'm like, oh, who cares what I thought about last time? And I'm thinking about this now. So some another scenery in my head or another object or things going on, and then back to my arms, and then I kind of let go. Or so. I, I don't know. I I kind of felt, I kind of felt the yeah, like I I just give I kind of I kind of give importance to those things that I'm thinking about or I'm looking for right now, and not like some other shit. Good. So that's focusing of attention. Now, let me ask you, what was your mind doing while we were doing the breathing and moving of the arms? It, it, that was odd. Um, 
I don't know why I'm like this, but I always like process images all the time. Like I have like visuals in my head. Like I, I I've talked about it a lot today. I think every time I talk about something, I, I tell you what I see. Like I always have like a a drawing almost or like um something that displays whatever whatever's going on. And whenever I, I do doing my arms up, uh, I couldn't stop thinking about, about a robot trying to trying to synchronize both, right? And I can see like I can I can see like notches, right? Like one, two, three, four, almost like a clock, mm-hmm. right? And that's what I was thinking about the whole time. I was like, and I was like, oh, for, oh, but what about the breathing though? Okay, but what, what about the notches? And I was trying to like sync both, and because I was having those thoughts, I couldn't sync them. Beautiful. Okay, so let me explain something to you. So everyone thinks that meditation is about stillness of the mind, right? Mm-hmm. So if we think about it, like you're, you're saying that anytime I try to still my mind, it doesn't still I have all kinds of thoughts and all kinds of shit is happening. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is this pen still? It is now. Yeah. Right? So this is hard for you to do. With me? Okay. You're not going to yeah. understand this in a second. Hopefully this will make sense. Yeah. For you to meditate, you can never do this. You can't just have something be still. For you to meditate, you need to do this. Well, if you can't fucking do it, I won't be able to do it either. I'm kidding. What's the difference between this and the other thing? Are both of these pens still? They're both still, but this one requires like like an effort to keep it still, I feel like. Absolutely. This is what you need. Balance. Not this. Okay. This, your mind is going to get fucking bored. And it's going to think about a thousand different things. Okay. And people yeah, who tried to teach you how to meditate, they taught you this. You're never going to be successful meditating like that. This is what you need. Okay? And then what you need to do is do it while standing on one leg. So okay. your meditation, your stillness of the mind, because the pen is still in both ways. People think that meditation is stillness that comes through no effort. For you, Felix, it must come through maximal effort. Yeah. And if you can fully engage your mind, it's not about stopping your mind. It's about pushing it to its very limits. And so I think like that's the, that was the goal. And I think you were even doing it because you were bouncing between focusing on the breath and focusing on the robot. You see that? Yeah. Yeah. And then even at the end, I told you, bounce between the breath and the sensation in your arms. You must bounce. And you were like, what does that mean? It's exactly what you were doing before. That's what I was telling you to do. Bounce between mm. the two. Your meditation or, or your stillness is going to come through rhythm and balance, not through like sitting still. Mm-hmm. It's still still though, right? There's no movement. It's just a completely different thing. It's going to come through balance. And so you need mm-hmm. to bounce back and forth as much as you can. And, and the, the, the cafeteria exercise, which we can't do now because of COVID, that too is about bouncing between as many things as you can as quickly as you can. And in between all of that, you'll find stillness. Okay, so, okay, is there, is there such a thing as like too fast? Because uh, as, as nope. sometimes I have like, a, there isn't? Nope. If it's too, if there's no such thing as too fast. The only thing that there is is not fast enough. So you need to push your mind until you are exhausted. Okay, because I, I remember reeling back one time where I was like, um, I was thinking about stuff, right? When we're doing it. And I was like, um, wait, that's, that, that's like unreasonable. I'm, I'm going too fast now. I, I, for some reason, my mind was just going faster. And I was like, okay, chill, man. You need, whatever you were thinking about, think about it a little bit more and then we'll go to the breath. So I, I have to not do that then. Yeah, no, no, well, so, so what, what we do want you to do is return to things. It's not about speed. It's about not returning. Okay. Right? So return not, to not your returning. breath. Return to the sensation. Let your mind go somewhere and bring it back. Meditation for uh-huh. you should be about anchor and balance, not about stillness. Mm. Okay. Okay? Yeah. And yeah. in terms of That's a cool. technique, you can try to do this technique. You can also try... Let me just think. I would literally say what you should do is like, you should do like more martial arts oriented meditation. I think that'll work better for you. So I'd say like, learn how to balance a pen or learn. And then once you get good at this, then do it on one foot. 
So you should you should be stable. I'm going to teach you something. Um, I forget what what pose this is in in one second. I mean, I, I got to okay. That's all right. No, no, one second. Hold on, hold on. You can sit here. That's fine. You can sit. I I just daddy needs to demonstrate something. Okay. So you can sit. I have no problem with you sit. You continue sitting. No problem. Okay, hold on. Okay. So I want you to do. I don't know if this is a tree pose, right? So I want you to do this. Do you do yoga? Oh, uh, I don't do yoga. So tree pose. This? Yep. Oh, whoa! Wait, I'm just gonna balance. Why can't I balance on that? I don't know. Hold it. Put your arm. Put your hands in the mustache above your head, and hold it. Close your eyes. This? Like like this. Arms oh, straight. What? What like this? No, no. no. I, so I'm just. I'm. I, I can't squat. Yeah, yeah. So put the leg in, and then with your upper arms, do this. Yep. Good. And hold it. Good. So close your eyes. What's your mind doing? Balance it. Uh, I'm not getting like visual stimuli. I'm I'm, I'm fucking it up. Is it, is, am I bad? Not being able to balance it? No, no, no. If you're not getting visual stimuli, that's what we want. Why am I so bad at this? Open your eyes. It'll get easier. Okay. Okay. So now is your mind wandering? Are you thinking about things? Yeah. Okay. Close your eyes. What's happening to the thoughts? <laughs> I can't think about it because I'm thinking about balancing. There you go. That's about it. That's what you need to do. Open. <laughs> Open. Okay. See, the thoughts come right back. They'll come back in a second. Give them a second. They'll come back. Thoughts come back. Yeah, not, not the back. Close them. Not the Make them go away. Close them. Try to hang on to them. Try to hang on to the thoughts as long as you can. I have them. No, I'm gone. I have them again. Good. Bouncing back and forth. Balance. Open your eyes. Do this. Yeah, now I'm thinking about the cold, less of the blood in my hands and how they feel empty. Good. Now I'm back. To, now I'm down. So, so, so it, that's still focusing on a sensation is not the same. Oh, shit. Hold on. Avi. Okay. One second. Oh, okay. I, I got to go because this that's kid's good. going crazy. Okay. But I, I get it though. If, if, you, if you don't get it or you have questions, DM me afterward, okay? And I'll, sure. I'll, I'll explain. Avi, can I just take you back for a second? Yeah. Okay, so let's give XQC some love. Thanks a lot, man. It was, it was a okay. pleasure meeting you, bro. Sure, man. I'll, I'll see you around, man. Thanks, th thanks for having me on. Yeah, of course. Sure. And, and let me know if you want sure. to follow up at some point or you have additional questions. Of course. Sure, man. Okay. Well, th thanks for having me do this. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you for coming on, bro. Th uh, have a good day. Okay. Twitch chat, I shall be right back, okay? I have to just go deposit this one. And then we'll, we'll close up. Just give me a second.